like I like shoes and stuff. Love Talk Radio. Such an old man. Such an old man. (laughs) 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 Okay. Sunday, July 16th, 20th. It's my birthday again. Happy Jill. birthday. Happy birthday. Yay. Yay. Woo, for that. Yay. Yay. Woo. And school is officially in. Sunday. <laughs> what about Friday? Freestyle Friday. Freestyle Friday. No Freestyle Friday? Boo. Maybe, okay. Maybe, maybe. Well, um, I am Mitch, and I am joined by my always illustrious co-host, once again, of the infamous aunt. Infamous, yes. I and, love that. And the, notor- <laughs> the, not- the notorious Aaron. Notorious. Notorious. <laughs> no, no, notorious. What's up, y'all? Sneaking in with the deadpan joke. So today <laughs> on this show we are discussing. Um, may he rest in peace, Albert Prodigy Johnson's autobiography entitled "My Infamous Life." Oh, let me just say, whoever keeps the face in that moral is a fucking sucker. <laughs> I would like to also... But you know what? They Apparently, from what I can understand, what I read of that, they threw that mural up in a place where they, there was beef. So what? That shit don't matter. That nigga dead. So what? I know. I know that. But, you know, I mean, it's... That's nut shit. That's this sissy-ass, punk-ass, pussy-ass generation we raising right now. Fuck that shit. Like, let the man live. Put his mirror up. Remember his mirror. Right. Well, at this point, we're... Because, I mean, that generation, our generation, we respect people when they're dead. Not much when they're living, though. But when they're dead, we do. So, at this point... It's like, especially when they're dead. Just let him... I'm all for taking a while to but this nigga died. Yeah, just let him rest. He had a big impact on the game. Like, let his mirror sit give us that yeah it should be put to rest at this point once a person fucking dies suckers. like I mean what are you gonna do now like what are you gonna do at this point fucking fucking suckers they get no respect for that whoever it like, is like I mean even him. in the book when um and, and we'll get to this more but when Tupac died they did shit out of respect for Tupac right let us mourn let us mourn what the fuck is wrong with you why you keep the face in the mirror for like a fallen soldier you know it's some punk ass whack shit that people do that's but. just whack whoever is doing it you whack bro like whoever the fuck it is you whack you get no respect like fuck you see your face dog whoever it is yeah it, it, it's like really fucked up but um so the book the book was actually pretty it was pretty long probably yeah. long winded I was wrong. I said it was five and a half hours. I was wrong. I was, like right. I was about to check you. I That's was like, this thing is, this thing is five hours long. This is like, like 15 hours. hours long. That's it. But, I mean, it's, it's hard, like, listening to him read this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, probably I, wonder if, hey, I, I wonder if Aaron read this whole thing on the toilet in one day <laughs> like he did it tonight. <laughs> I don't know. Aaron, Aaron was some super, he was some super genius shit. Like, fuck it, was about, it was about five minutes ago. <laughs> Aaron was some super genius shit. I can't do that. 
Yeah, I read this. I think I read this um around the same time I read uh Common's book too. Common book was dope. I like Common. Oh yeah. Book. I do too. And we're actually gonna review um one day it'll all make sense. That's Common's book as well, just not, you know, this month, but it'll be I think in the next couple of months, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, because we're going to do that, John, that with and, uh, um, Mo. Yeah, Quest of John, Mo, Meta, Blues together. Quest Love Book was great. I love that book. He's fucking hilarious. You know what, though? Yeah. I'm going to say this about, about, I don't like every book where I have to start out listening to your childhood. <laughs> but it was, it was good, though. Was good. But this one, no. Like hit, I don't understand how he could avoid being famous. Like his whole life is about being connected. Yeah, yeah, he had the juice. He had the juice. He his grandma used to dance, and his grandma was a Cotton Club dancer originally in, in the in the famous um, Harlem nightclub cotton club and her and his yeah. grandfather was a musician and then he played the saxophone right something like yeah something like that <laughs> yeah and he was and he was like they both knew all these famous folks his grandmother used to be cool he, with he lena plugged, horn he plugged quincy jones book too, his, his about granddad that. was taught quincy jones how to read music yeah that's dope that's deep his great, 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 I think, was it two greats or three greats? Granddad on his mom's side founded Morehouse College. That's some shit. That yeah. He said he was, like, um, he, he said some of that stuff he didn't even know he had to uh, research his family tree for that. Yeah. Yep. That's dope. That's crazy. He had, like, his shit was interesting. And then his grandmother had the dance school which is where of course Jay-Z got those dance pictures from <laughs> fuck Jay-Z exactly he almost made he almost made lunch he almost made lunch I don't I don't like that shit fuck so we'll talk about that later but yeah he's uh he had he had a very very um a very um, connected upbringing like he he was about to go on stage and on the, on that very very famous Diana Ross concert in Central Park in 1983. Yeah. But but then he it out and then go on stage. <laughs> he was very vulnerable with his book. He was. He, he talked about his sicker cell. His that's the only thing I think I want to. So we, we have we're, we're you know. We were talking earlier off air about his sickle cell anemia. Right. Which is a blood dis- disorder and you inherit it from your parents. So if if both your parent, parents are carriers of the sickle cell disease, because you can be a carrier but not actually have the disease. Yeah. You just, you just have the trait. Yeah, that was interesting because I didn't know that. Yeah. So apparently both his parents more than likely carried the sickle cell trait and they were carriers, but they didn't have the disease. So then when they came together and they had him, then he got the blood disorder. And that that lended a lot to his character too. It did. But it mm-hmm. sickle cell it actually is found in the in the red blood cells and it's an it's an abnormality and the oxygen, oxygen, excuse me, carrying protein hemoglobin, if I can pronounce that right, hemoglobin S. Oh. It's found oh. in your red blood cells. And instead of, because your blood cells are round generally, like a plate. Yeah. But in this case, instead of being round like a plate, they are shaped like a sickle. Like oh, are we are we getting deep? We're getting deep on the school in the podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we're so, very well rounded. We're very well rounded. <laughs> <laughs> and by them being shaped like that, the it, like when they're moving through your bloodstream, you're not getting enough oxygen. It's causing a lot of problems for you know with your blood traveling through your bloodstream. 
and yeah. it causes like severe pain, like a lot, a lot of pain inside your yeah, um, like you your said, body. You said sitting in the sunlight gave him some relief. Yeah, and he, that was a trick he said he learned. Yeah. Can you imagine the being a kid going through that? Right, could you imagine yeah. that shit? I was just thinking that because, like, you know, like, you can't even, like, focus on regular life you stuff. can't even feel my pain. You can't even feel my pain. He couldn't. And he couldn't He couldn't play. He couldn't play. Like, a, I was just thinking, like, Mr. Glass. The whole time I was thinking right? Mr. Glass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, he couldn't play. He couldn't go outside. He couldn't do anything because if he, like... Started moving too rigorously. Uh-huh. It would that up. would cause him to have a flare up. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Like I mean, like, just, I can't imagine that. That's the fuel. That's the fuel for one of our greatest MCs. But it also made him angry, you know, motherfucker. <laughs> I, that's 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 what made Prodigy Prodigy. Well, he was, and then because he was in the hospital so much, he was talking about how. He became yeah. acquainted with not just pain, but death. Yeah. Yeah, like he, being in a room with kids who didn't have it on to live and knew they didn't have it on to live. Mm-hmm. I, just, I can't imagine. Like, that makes you a fucking dark, macabre-ass person. Yeah. Yeah. But it translates great to records. It translates to lots of things, and I guess we're getting to that, because... It translated to him being a grimy. He was at the forefront of, of, of what I like to refer to him and Mob Deep were at the forefront of what I refer to as <laughs> as um, a freeway underpass rapist rap. <laughs> <laughs> the whole book rap. <laughs> Oh, the whole rap. rap. The hey, we love. The I was watching. Love I was time. watching Cream the other day. The man <laughs> what they all wearing? Fingers, gloves, and standing next to yeah. a to a barrel fire, warming their hands up. Like yeah, I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching Cream. Cream and the chick ones video. Yo, and yeah, and you saw them standing next to a standing a fucking empty lot with a barrel fire. Yo, yeah. Cream, Cream, Cream is a legend, yo. And Tim's on and like warming their hands, just talking Damn, grimy Damn, shit Damn. with a big ass Damn. bubble joint on and some some Tim. Yep, yep, that's exactly how it was. <laughs> 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 like I, I don't know if that's, but I mean, were they really doing that? Maybe <laughs> they tell it kind of rough in this book. Yeah, I think I think some of the stuff was like some of the stuff in the videos is probably like exaggerated, but some of that stuff was real. Like, um, it was real for them. It's a, it's a, it's a line on uh the infamous where Prodigy say something about uh sipping gin straight in a plastic cup, and then you see him with the plastic cup and shook one. So yeah, like, right. yep, you do. <laughs> yep, yeah, you do. But I feel like I mean he was telling the stories about like his his wife, but um. <laughs> How he was sleeping in her, her walk-in closet. <laughs> even, right. after the inf- even after the infamous came out. And they're like, got gold records that he's sleeping in his sleeping then in girlfriend's closet. walk-in closet. Uh-huh. That's sleeping grimy, though. <laughs> That's what I love. That's what I love about my beat. Cause they actually live that shit they talked about. I don't, I don't know if I love it or... I loved it then, I think. Yeah. They the older me is just, I mean, I'm glad they made it through, but like like Prodigy said, they did mad dirt, and he really comes clean about the shit that they, that they kind of did. Yeah, I like, yeah. what I like about their music is that it represents a time period. Like, you can't get none of that back, like, you know. True. As much as people complain about old oh, stuff ain't like it was in the nineties, it's not going to be like that anymore. Like people not living that way anymore. You know, people yeah. are more people more aware that you don't. You know, we don't have to be trying to these types of lifestyles. So. Well, I mean that's pretty good that you don't. But like we were talking to off air, he didn't have to. Actually, didn't have to live that way. Like his grandma. Remember you talking about his grandma being a millionaire? Yeah. yeah. But see, and that's, the, like that's the point I'm trying to make. Him how to, 
how to like invest his money and how not to put all his money in one bank. And she was yeah. she was kicking some um some she was kicking some expensive even further than four forty four knowledge on that motherfucker. She was like, look, <laughs> take all your money, don't put it in the same bank. I live <laughs> off my fucking interest. I'll never be broke. Like what? Yeah, they're all yeah. But that's, yeah, but see, that's the point I was trying to make. Like, you know, like, um, yeah. there's not a lot of young dudes or young people coming up that's like, you know, they're not trying getting to... that game. They're not getting that game. Grandma yeah. needs is 47. Well, I mean, grandmas sometimes are my age, and grandmas like me would be telling you stuff like that and kicking them out, but they don't always I think, know. But just like now, there's definitely a lot of grandmas that are not grandmas like grandmas in a bit back they're in not, the day they're, now. They're supposed to be big, they're supposed to be mommy. They, they're supposed to be like big mama. Ain't nothing like yeah. big mama. No, it ain't nothing. No, but big mama but doesn't it say mama. something? And that's but the problem it, with the culture. That's the problem with the culture. The mama but doesn't it say something about the time period where, you know, he didn't have to live like that, but he was still attracted to that lifestyle? I think it does. Yeah. But I'm mean, looking okay because again, like he was talking early on about how he could have been, um, he he could have got Alfonso Ribeiro's spot tap yeah. dancing. Remember, because his grandma yeah. had pool because she owns a um a dance school in Harlem, right? You know, and he you know Diana Ross's daughter at one point was going there, and he was talking about Shanti's mom dancing. Yeah. With, um, like he was around. People who like he met, he knew Ben Vereen. His grand, his grandma was kicking it with Ben Vereen out of L.A. and stuff, mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff that he could, like. He had choices of where he could have gone. He just made a conscious decision to do what he did. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I don't know if that's. I don't know what to chalk that up to because I always feel the same thing about Biggie. Biggie was the same way. Like he could have gone a different way or a different route. He just decided not to do that exactly but the hip the lifestyle that hip-hop calls to now is not that particular lifestyle it's not now, now, thing. Yeah, now, now. Fast, it does. I, see but that's that's even that's still more different than what the lifestyle that they're talking about I or think. if you're like you know who's the dude that, 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 that just got let out because he was locked up who was bobby Schmurder? One of them, I don't know. Murder, yeah. Or Kodak Black, one of them. Kodak Black, one of them. I mean, if let you're me on, still let me go on that crime shit. Fuck all those niggas. Fuck all those <laughs> But I'm still, if you're them, you're still going towards that grimy shit and you're still living that life whether or not you have or not. I don't yeah. know. Grimy, grimy means something different nowadays. That's all yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. It means something so, way okay, different. Got, okay, so what's me. grimy mean now? So, so, so what's grimy mean now? And grimy now is like I didn't turn my homework in on time. Like fuck out of here. What? What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if that's ever grimy. Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't yeah, I don't know if that's I, that wasn't the point I was trying to get at. But I don't know. <laughs> grimy now, I didn't turn my homework in on time. Like my girl ordered salad and I didn't pay for it. Fuck out of here. Like stop that dumb shit. It, grimy now, like what I said, like what we said before about Mob Deep, is like they they spoke to the lifestyle, but you know it was like it was like this is the way I live and these are the conditions, and you know I don't even know why I think this way, but this the you know what I'm saying this is the lifestyle, but it was it was more politicized, like what we were talking about before, like with these new artists. That's it's not more po- important. It was, it's it not was, it's it not politicized. It's not it's not like you know. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's, it's not. It's not like this rap. Babies complaining about not yeah. having It's not this. It's not. Music. It's not that this rap life can get me out of this situation that I'm in. It's not. You know, it's just different. It's like they just yeah. satisfied with being on lean and being high all day. And they don't. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, it's it's a different conversation as far as grimy rap. I'm concerned. Well, I mean, they they were they some of them were high. Like he talks about, and he was on coke. He was coked up and dusted. That's the other right. thing that I wasn't ready for. I forgot about that. How the New York mm. Negroes get, how they move and how they down. Like they, they do dust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And everybody doesn't do dust, and um, you know, in every different place, a lot of people do. You know, they might do heroin or they might do, you know, like harder drugs, but they don't get dusted. That's why why they sometimes be on the, they be on these fucking crazy trips because they be 
Cause they go off in their mind off that danger dust. Yeah. But see, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know, like, the mindset to me was different. Even, I don't know if y'all don't hear it or not. But, like, when they say stuff like, like, probably just say, I'm going out blasting, taking my enemies with me. If not, they scarred yeah. so they'll never forget me. Like, when you say some shit like that, it's just like, you know, at 19, you say some shit like that. It's like, yeah. damn. Like, you really, like, you really put thought into that. Like, even if he I die, I'm going to leave you with the reminder of some shit that went down. Like, that's crazy. You need an adult. Yeah, that's that. That's actually I've heard not say the same like kind of things like that too. Like that was a, definitely some shit in that time period where right, they would saying. where they talk like that. Yeah, where they say yeah, the mind, like yeah, the mind state of what you call grimy rap is different co- compared yeah. to like then is like, what you hear now. That's that fucking Scarface. That they were all fucking obsessed with Scarface. That's that obsessed with Scarface shit. Scarface, <laughs> niggas don't know Scarface no more. Oh no, they don't. But the, like, but like in my time period, cause Scarface came out I think in 1983, 84. Right. I want to mm-hmm. say that's all these little niggas that like their whole lives was, you know, say hello to my little friend, you know, <laughs> and, and, and sitting in a sitting in a room with a pile of coke in front of you, like sitting in front of you with a pile of coke. As high as your um, shoulders, and then and coming out with a fucking gun, like blasting, like I'm getting ready to go out with a blaze of fucking glow. Like that, that was the way that they thought, and that was like the shit to them. That's it. Yeah, that was rough. That was a rough time for hip hop. I mean, I Albert went his way. I definitely would have chose the dancing. Personally, <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, hey, grandma, where my top shoes at? I would not have gone that other way, but you know, yeah, yeah, that was uh, this is ain't shit, but holy shit. Why do you keep repeating that? Because <laughs> it happened, it happened. Um, well, yeah. it's actually worse now, it, 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 it's a dark time for hip hop. It is a dark time for hip hop, <laughs> but I mean, during grimy rap, it was a dark time too. It was just, yeah, it was it was dark and in an alley with a barrel fire. That's all. Well, I mean, it was still a little bit of hope, I think, in my generation, because like Aaron was saying, I feel like they felt. Like this is what's gonna pull me out of this shit, kind of sort of, or keep me. Yeah, I was watching. I was watching the uh, documentary on uh, the infamous. Um, this is before he had passed away, and um, they were talking about um, how they was in. They was in like a real like bad place. Like Havoc said, was talking about how depressed he was after Juvenile Hell didn't do so well. Mm-hmm. And um, he said like that. That energy translated to the um sound on the infamous because like it got you know what I'm saying it just got dark for them or you know what I'm saying they just well they, they got they dropped <laughs> they got yeah. dropped from their label completely yeah because they put they all into they they just put they all into you know what they were doing and you know what I'm saying it took a lot out of them so they said like that that energy and that depression that you know they was dealing with just translated to um and i'm assuming all the pain that probably was dealing with just translated to the music yeah and then infamous I, turned out to be like their biggest thing so i um i wonder let me get my impending doom button together here i wonder <laughs> how they would have been different because if you didn't if you didn't read the book um there's a place there where they actually go into two different places, Def Jam, to like shop them. Well, first Q Tip got them in the door. Yeah. Q Tip like listened to them and liked them, and so they and he kind of brought them in. So and he they got a direct audience right there with Larry Cohen. Cohen. And then Liar told them. Is this like Liar or Lior? I feel like that should be Liar. Because, Le- I, think <laughs> yeah, I think it's Lior. I think it's to be Liar for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> Lior Cohen, they got a direct audience with Lior. And um, he told them he liked them, but couldn't find them because they were too young. And they were like, 
expletive, expletive, expletive every two seconds. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they were like pissed because they would have been on Death Jam. Right. And then they they go tape that like months later, all of a sudden, Onyx was signed and they were screaming and yelling on the record and cursing. Onyx didn't curse that much from my remembrance though. Not like my beat does. What is it? Onyx is shot, right? Mm, elements of it, yeah. Because yeah. cause they're like all that loud screaming and some of the stuff that, that they say is off kilter, but it's not any necessarily more or less angry. It's just a lot of yelling. Yeah, they're, 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 like they're, like they're top they're of your song was yelling. You know. Yeah, that's yeah, that's part of the reason I couldn't really get into them or uh, MOP like that. I mean, I like I like MOP more, so I listen to MOP first. But I don't know, I just couldn't really get into that type of. MLP is definitely, we already discussed this before, MLP is definitely waiting for you under the freeway underpass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that they actually are rapists. I'm just saying, you know, if I saw them, I didn't know who they were, and they were just under the, like, I would be clutching my pearls in my purse at the same time. <laughs> but, um, so then they, so they passed on that, and they didn't go to Death Jam, so they were upset about not going there. Then, they got an audience with Puffy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and because it's a hip hop show, we can't get through one week without talking about his day. I feel like he should be a fucking fourth member of the podcast. What's the fuck? <laughs> 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 but he wanted to sign them and they didn't go with him. I don't remember. Did he talk about why he didn't what did go with him? I didn't hear it. Yeah, I don't remember that part. Cause I'm I glad they he, didn't. Me too, because I was going to ask you all, what do you think their their sign would really be or what would have been their fate if they signed with, with Bad Boy? I, I think he would have probably still let them be as grimy as he let Biggie be. But it wouldn't have came without some shiny suits. <laughs> I was going to say that, like, about, he had, like, a little bit of shine on him still. Like, even though yeah. he was grimy, he still had the, some kind of weird yeah. polish on him. Yeah, he would have been in the, they would have been in the hypnotized video with the uh, Versace on. <laughs> <laughs> can, 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 can you picture, I can't picture Prodigy and Havoc with with no. like a gloss, a glossy shine. No. I can't even like I don't even want to like. I'm gonna make a case for the barrel fire in this instance. I just think that that grind should fit them like that. Is it? I'm glad that they that didn't. That they wound up not doing that at all because I think that would have been like a really bad fucking move for them. Yeah. Just, a, just a, sidebar, a sidebar, though, like, you know what I find interesting about some of these um, stories that we've been reading, like, um, even with the Angie Martinez thing, and I think I talked about this before, yeah. like, mm -hmm. the, camarader the camaraderie with all of these people, like, it was like, everybody was in, like, the, you know, either the beginning or, like, towards the prime of their career. Yep. And and all of these people worked with each other across paths at some point, and, you know what I'm saying, it's, like, that's kind of dope to me, like, you don't see that yeah. anymore. Like you don't um, like like if you listen to Juvenile Hell, like they got Black Moon on there. Black Moon is on the Juvenile Hell album. Yeah. Um. Black Moon is also the, the underpass. Yep. Yeah. And uh, who else? <laughs> uh, on the Infamous, you got you got Raekwon, Nas, and all of them. Like this is their and, first and, album. Yeah. And yeah, he talked about how about how that came about to the whole Raekwon and Nas, like they were all together, yeah. making that. Yeah. He talked about that. Q-tip on there, like you don't have that. We don't have that nowadays. Nowadays, when you come out with your mm -hmm. debut, like you're relatively unknown, and ain't nobody trying to work with you. Everybody trying to do their own thing. Well, that's partially because the record labels don't really exist like that anymore. And what they're doing is they're some of these folks that have 
built-in followings off like YouTube and social media and shit. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But not really, could it not connect it to anybody through a, like a a collective so much like that anymore? It doesn't exist that way. All these lone MCs. Again, you guys know that even across the board, you're not seeing groups sign like that anymore. It's a bunch of lone people because they don't want to have to split money or they want to pay people. So they're like discouraging groups. Like you don't see duos and groups anymore. You see yeah, single right. people. Yeah. Yep. I'm just, I'm just kind of, I just disappointed that all of that energy is lost. Like, you know, you don't have like, yeah. you know, you don't have like artists and radio personalities and DJs and everybody just feeding off each other more so than nope. like, like how it was back then. Like it's crazy. Well, that's why the creativity, we always talk about that, that, you know, that feeds the creativity and that's the reason why everything is booty ass now because <laughs> there's nothing, there's no creativity, there's no place for you to bounce the creativity off anybody else, there's nobody for you to vibe with, and there's nobody to create checks and balances. No. Because, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you remember what he was talking about when he, because we were talking about before, when he, he, he went to Queensbridge to stay with Havoc. He didn't have to go there. He went there of his own volition. He wanted to. And so when he got there, it was like, you can't be claiming, you know, you were MC till you battle everybody in the Queensbridge project. So he had to right. battle everybody in the Queensbridge, including Nas. And he, and he had to wait for Cromega to come home from jail <laughs> so he can battle him. But when he heard Nas, remember he heard Nas and he was like, yo, he said, my shit, I knew what you would have to him. Mm -hmm. He said Nas told him right then and there, which I guess we've known, we've heard now that this is how Nas sometimes does shit like this. He's like, oh yeah, you know, his shit was cool. And then he talked shit behind his back. Later on, yeah. and they just like, like everybody the was like, like "fuck that," because <laughs> Nas was like, "this <laughs> <laughs> shit was boring." <laughs> like, but he said that that shit fueled him. It didn't make him want to go after Nas. It made him want to get better. Right. Right. And even at that point, Havoc shit he said was better than his. He said Havoc was writing for him, which I was surprised to hear. Yeah. Yeah. He did. On that first album, he said Havoc was... wrote a couple yeah. of songs. Yeah, I thought y'all knew that. No, I didn't know that. That part yeah, I didn't wrote, remember. Yeah, he Havoc, wrote... Havoc, he Havoc, wrote, all right. Havoc, like... Havoc just all right. Yeah, he wrote He wrote some of the... No, nah, Havoc, Havoc got his moments, though. <clears throat> Like especially on uh the uh Quiet Storm remix. Quiet Storm remix is uh -huh. one of my favorite favorite verses from uh -huh. her. Uh -huh. He said, uh eh, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> nah, he, he over there hating. <laughs> oh well, I mean having having must have been something for him to aspire to be because he did it. All right, yeah. Cause he's definitely he definitely surpassed him if that was yeah, that I wasn't was surprised. Case. I was I wasn't surprised to know that uh, Havoc um, wrote some of the stuff on Juvenile Hell because a lot of times on that album you can't really. It's hard to tell the difference between uh, who's wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that was yeah that yeah you're right. It did kind of blend like like blend together a little bit. Mm hmm. Like like more than the other. What does that take away from the infamous? I don't think so. I don't yeah, think I don't, I, yeah, I don't think so. But their record company did. Mm. <laughs> that's kind of jacked up. Well, that's first period. So, um, who are we? Who, who are we doing today for um, Out to Luck? I want to say I want to say 
Who oh, Ant? I can't hear you. I said I wanna say B T. B T. Why B T? Exactly. Like, they didn't fuck with Barry while I was living. What happened? Why? They didn't they didn't fuck with Barry while he was living. No, of course not. Well I mean they ain't fuck with other people, but, but why him? Why him in particular? I don't know why. Do you? I have I, don't I really don't. I think what it was is that um he just didn't he didn't fit the um criteria for you know what BT usually go go for like uh, you know BT usually I mean if they going to honor somebody it's going to be somebody that's more safe so you know I think that was, that was the that was the issue with them like um while he was alive and so like you know it's hard it's hard to um like even after he passed away it's hard to honor prodigy of mob deep <laughs> you know what i'm saying without yeah. uh get, without getting too grimy at the yeah. uh war, at the award True. show Yo, yeah you know, I, had, I had i had freestyle bars about that same topic i said it was on the recognized beat the uh, locks drum yeah i said i'm too hard for mtv not black enough for bet just let me be <laughs> yeah yeah that's yeah that's um that's pretty that much the shit. case with that same shit i think I don't, you know what though? Part of me feels like, uh, and I'm, I'm, I am not a Decepticon. I'm just I'm gonna say what I feel though. I feel like um, we're not doing a good job anymore of honoring and keeping what has passed in our memory while still yeah. moving towards the future. So I feel like. They yeah. felt like, oh, we got a hope, like, we got to bring this, you know, this cooning ass Negro future on stage. We don't have right. time to do, you know, like, get the fuck out of here. I'd rather see a prodigy tribute than a fucking slave mask on a man and his fucking daughter. It's fucking yeah, daughter. that shit, like, that shit disrespectful. Bro, like, come on, what the fuck? That's what make it even. That's what make it even more annoying, though. It's like it's like, oh well, you know, um, groups like you know, uh, uh, Mob Deep. That's too provocative for you know what we for what we um go for. Really? But then you, Mom, but then you'll put some, provocative. Yeah. Yeah, but then you go for some bullshit like that. Like that's what make it so crazy. How about that? Fucking mask off. Were you saying Mob Percocet? But he because he's saying the clean version. All of a sudden, yeah. because he's saying the uh, the clean radio version, it was somehow. Everybody knows what that song is about. Mhm. This is crazy stuff. And like, yeah. um, never, never chase a baby. Publicly, only chase my money. I want to say publicly on the air for the matches. Fuck Uh-oh. future. Fuck future. Yeah. <laughs> Are like you perpetuating this nasty ass stereotype of black people like the drug use and shit? And like and you said yourself, you don't participate in these drugs that you're fucking talking nope. about. Why the fuck are you talking about them then? Yep. Money. That, that whole that whole situation is suspicious. Like fuck future for the record in court under old fuck future. Yeah, we've said that. And if you want to hear us say fuck future more. Tune in for the pandering show. <laughs> He's definitely a fucking culture vulture. Yo, I can't, I can't stand that nigga, yo. Fuck that nigga, yo. yo. I don't, you know what? I fucking don't. I just don't understand how he related to Rico Wade. That's I need fucking this nigga. I need him to have all bad karma for the rest of his fucking life. I think, I think he's already living in fucked up karma right he now. He needs just... fucked up karma. He needs fucked up. How is it that we live in a world where Future is the hero and Russell Wilson is the bad guy? <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. How how the fuck? What what the fuck is wrong with black people for that shit? Mm-hmm. Like, that shit is so fucking annoying. Like what what the fuck is wrong with you, yo? Like what the hell? Come on yep. now. That shit, yeah, that that shit money. is, that and I mean, at money. least even if even if Prodigy, you know, was grimy, because I mean, let's keep it real. That yeah, shit did in his book. I mean, they, but they did. 
deep, the shit that he was doing, that, that they were doing, that they lived, they did some fucked up shit. I'm not even yeah. gonna hold you on. <laughs> And probably they would say, say I did some fucked up shit. Like, like every other part of the book, every time you turn, <laughs> like, something to getting shot, was running from getting shot. Like, people got shot because people was aiming guns at a plane. I told you I, I went to sleep listening to the book and I had it like the dream was cool. I could hear the book of my dream. But everything was good up until the point where I got stabbed. <laughs> I got stabbed in the dream. <laughs> everything was cool up to the point where I got stabbed. I was like, oh shit, what the fuck? That's like, the fuck thing. was short, like fucking Nori Nori ain't shit. The ground and the bullet broke his off the ground and hit some motherfucker <laughs> in his shit. Fucking Havoc shoot the boy in the stomach by mistake. Well, how the fuck you shoot somebody in the stomach by mistake? You don't remember that part? <laughs> <laughs> Havoc shot the boy in the stomach by mistake. I don't fucking And then, wait a minute. And then they had to go to the hospital and talk dude into not telling on them because That's remember, crazy. he. They had to take his intestines out. He had a shit bag. They had to, yes, because that bullet had like some shit in that was going to give his ass gangrene. That's crazy. It was an like, old they, rusty. They did. They found yeah, the gun in the park. Shit. They found the gun yes. in the park. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> they did some fucked up shit now. Let's not even go there. And then one of his boys, he was talking. Who, who was it? Was it um, No Way? I can't yeah. remember who it was. He was like, I think I just killed us and go over the speaker. Like, yeah, what? it wasn't it. It was, it was like, yeah. you, kill, you kill somebody with some of the speakers, though, for real. I'm like, that's the best thing I've ever said that. Heard. That. <laughs> like, like, dumb shit. But, but he has remorse. Though, he does yeah. talk yeah. about feeling. Yeah. Music behind that. He does, yeah, start, like, I mean, he, he he did, you know, turn away from that and start trying to live a more righteous life and, you know, do better at some point. He lost pride he way too soon. Yeah. I just feel like I would have rather have seen that tribute. Aaron? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much just, I pretty much hate the same sentiments. Like, it's just, I don't know, like Anthony said, like, you know that the whole future thing is like how is that uh how is that an alternative to um better than you your know. culture better than yeah. your people like you rapping about shit you ain't even familiar with you perpetuate in a negative stereotype and you don't even do that shit like what the fuck is wrong with the world where that's okay Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, at the at the very least, they were in that grimy shit, and it, it was who they were. Yeah, right. They and they don't, and, they and like I don't like, and I don't know how other people hear it, but you know the way when I listen to that music, like I don't listen to it as if they're glorifying it. In most cases, like right, yeah, like, it's not, it's not, it's not to be glorified. It's like you know, it's like this just happened to come with the lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, mm-hmm. it was just. It was like we said about Jay Z, like it was like on some matter of fact shit, like with the, you know, yeah, the lifestyle. I don't know. I think that I think niggas in New York glorified that shit though. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Though. They I think, all lived that. I think I think with if the artist, I think the artist that's talking about it, they feel more, they feel more remorseful, especially like when they they hear themselves speaking about certain things on record. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, when the fans get a hold of it, it turns into a whole nother monster. I think that's how it goes, though. It was. It was that's my true. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Said, he even said the yeah. Okay. I'm gonna. Call. I'm gonna jump on the uh, record too. Fuck future. <laughs> and I've <laughs> caught him. A, I've caught him a tap dancing nigglet before. Nigga, yeah. But, that's yeah. the term. Fuck yeah. Fuck future. This, this straight. This stage niggardry. In, in yeah. all its glory. And it's nothing but destructive. Nothing but yeah. destructive. There isn't anything like there. I still feel like there was some. There was something redeeming. Sometimes there was a little bit of redemption, like glimmers of hope, and some of that me shit. Especially Ma Deep and like Wu Tang. It wasn't always like because they were all sometimes still on that five percent of knowledge shit. So they would ev- they would throw you some bones. Yeah. 
Yeah. It ain't no more bones. Niggas like, what the fuck? Like, come on, man. For real. But, I mean, there are no bones being thrown now. There's just... None. This is what you choose to rap about. You choose to rap about addiction and depression and, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Well, they're all addicted and depressed, but I feel like certain people, like, him are... They're capitalizing off the fact that, you know, everybody is... Yeah. But you're not offering no solutions. But the, but the message, solutions. the message, the message from them sound more like promotion, opposed to like when you hear it people is. like, like right. if you hear, if you hear Joe Button, when you hear Joe Button talk about dealing with addiction and stuff like that, it's like the message is it's different. It's not promotion. It's very different. Yeah, we've, exactly. we've never, we've never, this is the first time with, with you guys' generation, with these millennials, the first time drugs, heavy drugs have ever been promoted by anyone black. Ever. We never ridiculous. promoted no, drug I, I can't support that. Ever. I can't support that at all. I can't support that at all. Like anybody promoting that shit is like a, a nut. Like you're a dude. Like I want to fight. I want to fight. That's fight. That's fight. Stop talking about that shit. Well, I remember I told you I got into the argument with that dude who was trying to convince me that that um. D'Angelo's brown sugar was about heroin, and I was like, no, you fucking idiot. It was about weed. Shut the fuck up. Stop talking. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm saying it's because this generation, because they don't understand that people did not promote hard drugs, that would have never happened. There's nothing cool about being a fucking crackhead. <laughs> nope. There's nothing, nothing cool about nope. that. Nope. Like, cut that shit out. Like, that shit is destructive. Stop it. Yeah, it's crazy that we even gotta explain that to anybody. Like, it's <laughs> why? Not. Stop! What the fuck is wrong with you? Crack been out here for a while. Like, you see what it do to people. Why are you still taking it? That yeah. Shit? yeah. See, but they don't. They don't. They don't consider that stuff like the equivalent of crack. Like, it's perks. It's perks. It's but Molly's no, Molly. <laughs> Molly has. Molly has. Um, certain levels of crack in it sometimes. Yeah, we yeah. know that. We know that, but other people they just like it's different. They don't care. They don't, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care. That shit is stupid. I'll never understand that shit. That That's shit is crazy. It's fucking. Yeah. Okay. Stupid. So BT. Yeah, BT. You're like fuck. The, I, I don't even get into Jay Z. You talk about Jay Z later, but that was I was still pissed about. BT is a corporation that's harmful to the culture. You know what, Bob. Oh, what's his name? Who, who sold? Who sold out? His ex-wife actually complained about that too. It like is absolutely harmful to the culture. Being teaching not yep. even. Not anymore, no. No, no. We we beyond. I like centric. Centric is all right. Yeah, I watch TV <laughs> one sometimes. So TV one is all right. I lo- I actually love TV one. I I turn to TV one more than I do anything else. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of interested in the new season of Unsung. I'm gonna say I love Unsung. That's my shit. That's why I love it. Unsung is so fucking dope. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they and they do hip hop shit too. I wonder if they're gonna do a Prodigy episode. I really want them to do my beat. They should. Now. They should. Yo, they done yeah. some really decent. I feel like that that like that they should do Wu Tang, but I don't think they could get a whole show Wu Tang in one hour. On. They got, got way on. too much going on to get everybody on there. Mm-hmm. But that is. If you got anything from that, it's fuck the radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? They're all fucking conglomerates at this point. That's just all they do is just suck everything dry. So fuck and, all of it. And you know what? Fuck each and every last one of them. Fuck all. That's of why them. we gotta be independent, like Chance the Rapper. <laughs> Chance, good luck on that SoundCloud shit because I didn't pay for years of subscription. So yeah, good luck on no, that. No, Chance, Chance is gonna make SoundCloud um fucking work for all of us, so we can go to SoundCloud, listen to our Prodigy interviews. <laughs> I like, I like. So we don't get shut down. I, I do like too. SoundCloud. I like SoundCloud. Yeah. So, so what? What parts of it is? is everybody doesn't know, but like Aaron is like a huge Mob Deep fan. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. We actually argue, we argue about that all the time. 
What um what parts of the book stand out to you the most? Um I don't know. Um it was <laughs> <laughs> the nigga needs a whooping, yo. <laughs> <laughs> he is a fucking nigga. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of she busted his mom's dick and remember what he got. <laughs> he got busted in for a chocolate and she like raised his right arm up and beat the crap out of him uh, with something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was kind of like, you know, when you reading it and like, you know, it's a difference between like reading about the lifestyle and, you know, getting that uh, first person perspective uh, uh, opposed to listening to the music. And like reading this stuff, some of this stuff it was kind of like disheartening because it's like, damn, like, yo, know, you really don't like a lot of that shit was unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, like so much I don't know, like, unnecessary. Yeah, like you know, like I'm, I'm sitting here. I was looking at the part about him talking about collecting guns and stuff, and it was just like, yes, yes. <laughs> it was just like for then, what? You know what I'm saying? Like. Even, Boy, that that was like he said that kid. I never seen a gun like that in my entire life. But remember his dad? His dad was crazy and like guns. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't far from far far from it. Mhm. Yeah. He was talking about how gun obsessed his dad was. Yeah, I don't know. That kind of that kind of tie into the whole paranoid lifestyle, I guess. Absolutely. Well, I his mean, dad you know, did like a fucking jury heist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the run for most of the book. He was on the run for most of the book. And he finally they finally caught up with him and he did his he did his stint. Yeah. Um another another part that's kinda like, you know, like real self destructive that I wasn't really a fan of, but I but you knew you knew it was what it was like the whole like when he talk about just like running through money like when they really started getting bread mm-hmm. and like you know just running through the money and not being responsible with it and I'm like man yeah. like, but see he had his grandma off that already fucking schooled him he was just doing what he wanted to do yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying he had he's not one of these motherfuckers that did like Jay Z is like oh you gonna to- his grandma already taught him he had people in his life that had hooked him up with knowledge. Like, he should have done better. He just was in that fucking street making bad decisions. Yeah, being being hard-headed. But, like, being you know, hard-headed. I feel like that's a lot of, um, that's a lot of the behavior that was perpetuated back then. Some of it was that, and some of it is just, when you're a dude, because, like, how many times I had to hear him talking about running trains on somebody? That shit that dudes do were disgusting yeah. and young. I feel like that's they're always problem, trying to do. People. They're always trying to do shit like that. Like, where does that fucking come from? Where, like, that mindset? Mm-hmm. Why do you it's think that, that that like? Why do you think? Where are you getting this from? Yeah, we gotta get this to run a train on everybody. Like, what? What? Yeah. Why is that even a fucking thing? It shouldn't. Shouldn't be. I feel like that's one of the problems where I have to do. Like, we prioritize the wrong shit. I know yeah, that- my two illustrious gentlemen that I fought when they were in high school are not like that. But I know there's some grimy folks that was around them that probably was on some stupid shit like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. No question. What, what's crazy about that whole... um? That whole rape culture thing, like, it's it's, it's funny because um, I was reading um, a side of Shakur book a few years ago, mm-hmm. and she was talking about how that was like real heavy back then. Like she's talking about the sixties and the seventies, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's crazy. Because like you know, like growing up and knowing people that was into that type of thing, like um, it's it was like you know. New. It seemed new. like this is something new that you know yeah. people yeah. our age just our started age getting into. No, I didn't realize. That's why. No. That's why the Bill Cosby no. shit is bullshit. Yeah. That's why. But what I don't. But what I don't understand is that what and maybe maybe we still be something on the bro man show we talk about because you know this is definitely part of that bro man's culture. 
what the fuck is in you all that is pushing you all to do shit like not the two of you but like men in general where does that shit where is that shit coming from like i fuck your girl or like how all these dudes and and in the industry, they all gotta fuck the same girl because they gotta prove something. Like, what the fuck is what is that shit about? Yeah, um, I don't, um, yeah, no, that shit crazy. No, <laughs> no, yeah, I'm good. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like we talk about Ice Cube's nappy dugout. Like, what? Where is? She, why do you need to make songs like this? Why? Why is no? Why do you need to be out here in the street doing that shit? What is it? And see, the only thing about Prodigy saying, you know, he knows he's done some wicked shit. He's a man. He can shake that shit and keep moving. That kind of yeah. shit for a woman will you stay with her for the rest goal. of her life. That's the double standard. Yeah, it depends. It depends on the. It depends on the guy, though. Cause That's you know, I know, I know some guys that done, that done grimy shit. Even though, they live even with though. that shit. Even though I admit it's double standard, but like I live by the saying, like a key that opens many locks is a master key, but a lock that opens the energy key is a shit. No, that's lock. bullshit. Oh that's god! Bullshit. <laughs> oh god! No, that's a shit lock. It. No, that's that bullshit. <laughs> that's that's, bullshit. that's it No, it is. It, it, it's it really 100%. is. It really is. It's one hundred percent. It really is. It's one hundred percent bullshit. It's one hundred percent bullshit. Stop. Stop giving yourself the right to be a whore. Yeah. That shit is no. That shit is no. 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 Tell him. Tell him why it's bullshit, son. No. That is complete and utter bullshit. And it's a it's a it's a victory. It take work. He's supposed to work for that. He's work for that. No. No. You know what's supposed to happen? You are supposed to grow the fuck up and stop being an idiot. <laughs> and stop and stop, cause like when he was talking about oh that's how I learned that girls are grimy too women are human beings the same way you are they they're are not human any beings, different but girls are grimy they're not you, can't, you but, can't but that. So are, you all, but you all are grimy too what are you talking yeah. about he, he but that's what I said on, on but, about <laughs> grimy he's being and then but he that's, chooses a woman to be a grimy listen, that's the point that's the point I made there's That's the point I made the other day about the there's conversation we were having. There's nothing what? better in the world about it, than the there's conversation we were having. In the world than talking your way into some girls. The conversation we had the other day yeah, because, about um, because you, I don't, you know what, I, Aaron, go ahead what you're saying, but I, I'm gonna say this. No, <laughs> the conversation, the, the conversation we were having the other day about um, something wrong with y'all. I was why, saying, I was saying. why I feel like, why I feel like, you know. <laughs> We gotta, we gotta teach men to do better first. You know what I'm saying before we start, yeah, you know, getting on women because, because a lot of, because a lot of times, a lot of times the behavior of women is like basically a defense mechanism or it's a trickle down effect. Yeah. What, what men are doing? Yeah, it's a mirror. Right, it's a mirror image. It's a defense. And what's, and what's funny yeah. about you know like as far as like men's behavior is that um, I don't know if y'all read the part where um he was talking about how he didn't. It took for him to go to jail to really grow up. Yeah. You know what I'm yep. saying? And, and yeah. He did talk about that. And, and realize that, you know, I had been a fucking 17 year old boy. Yeah. Boy. For, yeah, for, for most like, of my for life. like 16 years. Yeah, thing, he said he was 16 like for men, 17 years. Men, yeah. men are raised to neglect their emotions, which is fucked up. It is, it is fucked up, but that's where, it, but. Then you wonder why we got females out here acting the way they do. <laughs> That's a defense mechanism. Yeah. Cause yeah. dude, niggas really ain't. Well, shit. I mean, you gotta start girls guarding your shit. Like, you gotta start guarding your shit all the time. Niggas, girls talk about how niggas ain't shit, and it's really true. Like niggas really ain't shit. Right. We and really you know what? And, and the thing that makes it the thing that makes it so crazy is that you might have a decent dude. He come up, you know, he come up in the world and he try to give his stuff wholeheartedly to a female. No, you don't, know, you don't but, know how to handle that. Yeah, not just that, but he might get turned away because she she on her defense now. Maybe she right. dealt with an angry yep. dude, and now she turned right. him out and, and then have him feeling like you know what, man. Yeah, they all the, they yeah. all the same. You know what I'm saying? So that's the right. cycle that we are dealing with because well, of the, that's the true. Unrepaired. But but one of the things that that definitely has to happen. Number one, like women are not like, and that's what I was getting at when I was just talking to you. You have to. Stop 
in scenarios where women are subhuman or they're supposedly we're not subhuman we're not um, superior human like I'm expecting us to be something else or to be better like all this whole stuff like y'all should be better than us that no we're just people yeah. we're not we're not better than you we're not worse than you we're just people and so because you don't get that concept you don't understand that they're shitty people they're <laughs> good people yeah. well, that's because, some that's women because. are shitty some men are shitty some that's women are good some whole, men are good it's this, whole, it's this whole social media thing where black women black women is like a goddess by default Black woman is a queen by default. Like, that yeah, where is that happening at? Cause, cause yeah, that, is, that is a narrative that's being pushed right now. People take that but and run with it. Like, pushed, you can't be a queen without a subject. Against... Somebody is a subject somewhere. No, it's, well, that's being pushed <laughs> against... But, but that's being pushed against, you know, the, the black man being king. That whole narrative yeah, right. is about trying to pull black people up above their social status in this country, which is a yeah, whole completely yeah. different yeah. But, yeah, but, once it, but once again, but once again, you got things being taken out of context. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot wrong with the black community. There's a whole Yeah, lot. there's a lot like, I mean, we're not going to fix it right now, but, you know. PTSD <laughs> comes to mind immediately. PTSD. We're, we're, we're in shock as a community. But Oh, definitely. Like, People who got this perception, um, like you can't. Everybody can't but, be a boss. Yeah, but how? Boss for employees. But how did we get to this point now where it takes for a motherfucker to go to jail to realize that he he need to be a man? Like you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and takes, that was my thing about about part two. Like, I remember it, it. It wasn't just him. He said boy man, and he came back a Muslim, and he was like on some, like a whole different plane, and he was like, oh shit. Wait a minute, right. what is this dude doing? Like, but that's what happens a lot. You know, what Prodigy is describing, where it's actually, you guys hear me talk about this all the time in this damn Peter Pan culture that hip hop has created and fostered all these years mm-hmm. is that people used to be grown in a whole different way before hip hop. Mm-hmm. They were adults very different, and they were adults at different ages. Like, they. Like by the time you got maybe 19 and 20, 21, 22, you were already starting to be. Rakim was a grown ass cool. man. <laughs> yeah. Rakim, Rakim was a grown ass man. Big, big Daddy was a grown ass man. Right. Like, like this, you know. But, but you they got, you got. Last, last I think for those it, that, that were like that. Yeah, I think what it is though is that we got a lot of a lot of things that represent adulthood that um that that play a part in um these young kids' life now. Like if like when we was in high school, you know what I'm saying? Like if if you see somebody if that person got a car but they like 16, 17, it's like damn, you know what I'm saying? He on his grown man. You know what I'm saying? He just all yeah. he got is a car though. He ain't really dealing with no grown man shit. All you yeah. see is that he got a car so like the the perception i think the perception um change of of like you know what a grown person is supposed to be like well, that, that, as the years went down as the, as the yeah. years went on but i mean that that's gonna happen just because and i would argue that that happens with every generation but you have to curtail it what happens is every person that's young when they see somebody adulting all they see is the perks and the privileges without the responsibilities of exactly. what it means yeah, to be yeah, an adult. What, right. So that's all the they want to do is yeah, all they want to do is they want to drive the car, they want to fuck the bitches, they want to have a house, they want dude, you got a fucking mortgage. With, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's you got a fucking great. mortgage is what you have. They you like, have a mortgage. Yeah, they like, wait, what part of the game is that? <laughs> the part where you own a house and you have a mortgage. Yeah, that, and you got a lot of people. Yeah, you got a lot of people that don't even want to deal with that now, like, you know. And yeah. there you go. Perk it, perk it that Molly, and, you know. Well, they just want to do the fun part. Just, look, I, I want all the fun fuck, parts. I don't want the other part. Fuck, fuck, bitch. <laughs> 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 it is all I want about future today. I want somebody to spit in his face. 
Fuck you. Whoa! Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. You're harmful to the culture, dog. Like, you're no good. You're I don't you. know if I would go you. that well. I don't want somebody to spit in his face. I want somebody to spit in his face. We probably shouldn't do that. Um, um, yeah, I'm not saying I would do it. I wouldn't do it because I'm not that bad of a person. But I want somebody to spit in his face. Um, listeners, please no one spit in his face. Please no, no one spit in Future's no. face. Yeah, don't do that. Do it, you don't, if you do, do it, that, I will, the, I will buy you 20 nuggets from McDonald's. No, no, no don't do that. What? Don't, don't, don't do any of what he said. Don't do any of that. I will buy you 20 nuggets from McDonald's with no, honey mustard sauce. If you no, spit. he will not. Stop that. <laughs> and nobody's going to do that. Nobody's going to spit if you truly spit. <laughs> nobody's going to stand up and challenge the Migos with flowy shirts on. Nobody's going to do any of those things. I don't things. care about Migos. I don't care about Migos. Migos. I don't like them either because they're cooking up crack in a crock oh. pot somewhere. With a Uzi. But, I don't know. With a that's and we're not, grandma could be making beef too right now. Best practices. Why are you Why are you cooking up dope with a crock pot with a Uzi? Like that's just like not safe. <laughs> you know what? I wonder. <laughs> my only thing about about prosperity, I was wondering before it was. I wonder because everybody else around him was selling dope, right? Yeah. I wonder what because he never really went in depth. Cause he got caught selling crack that one time in high school, and then he never did it again, from what we can understand. That's what he wants us to believe. Well, he said he did. He said he didn't do it anymore. He said I wasn't selling dope. Everybody around me was, but I wasn't he, selling he, it. He was a user. But he didn't use crack. He snorted. He he snorted cocaine like 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 eighties yeah. like eighties throwback. Yeah. Or, but yeah. I mean, in that time period, that was well, that was the thing. Well, actually, no, it, not really. That, that, not yeah, really no, it really wasn't. Really. That that had kind of because remember he was saying that the old heads in the club they the heads, were snorting, yeah. and he was like because that was their time period. His boys, if they had to saw him snorting coke, they would have been all on his top about that. Yeah. But then there was a point too where he said him and Havoc went in the bathroom do it together. But that was like down the line though a little bit, wasn't it? Yeah. Like after shit had you know what really struck me is his his gay uncle. We gotta get a Whitney Houston quote. Okay, it's cheap. His gay <laughs> uncle, like he he his gay uncle, he really did not have he 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 actually I was I was surprised that he didn't say anything bad. I mean, he was like, you know what? If somebody's yeah. gay, it's not I was like Bad. He was like, you know, he's used to in down anybody for being gay. I was like, right. really? See, but that that speaks of growth, though. I think because I feel like if he wrote this book like earlier, <laughs> it would have been a little different. Well, he yeah. he did say he grew up around gay people a lot that yeah. whole time period because his his aunt had that dance studio, so you know that there had to be people that were gay around him when he was there and stuff. So. It, I think he true. grew up with it. And I think that maybe that that might be something that is important. Like if you if you grow up around it and you know and understand stuff, it won't seem so foreign to you and you won't be like discriminatory against it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're open to it. Yeah. But his gay uncle, remember the time he was talking about his gay uncle and who wasn't really his uncle. When he hurt his hand that time because he got to his like latest scrape. And he fixed them some pasta. He was like, he fixed us pasta. And then we, I was like, what? <laughs> 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 yeah, gay uncle fixed you pasta and then you broke out. <laughs> that reminds that me think about um, Prince making pancakes after he put that. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> 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 was it was it was funny shit, that shit. I love this book. I'm gonna do it again when I'm done with it. Yeah, me too. It was really yeah. good. Yeah, I like that. I just don't wanna um, I don't wanna fall asleep to it no more. <laughs> don't wake up getting fast again. I was traumatized. Yeah. <laughs> My be forever. I was traumatized. Any um last thoughts, Aaron? The- um I don't know. I just want to say, like, you know, as far as, like, the Mob Deep legacy, like, 
I don't know, like, I always, like, and people that know me, like, they know that I listen, I listen to my beat on a regular day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just to get me through my, my own day because, like, I listen, I listen to their music, like, as, as a, a way to look to see that, you know, everybody got their own struggle. Like, that's what I get from their music, you know what I'm saying? Like, on top of all the, on top of all the hardcore gangsta grimy exterior like you know that's that's basically the message you get from you know their music it's like you know everybody got their own struggle and um that that pretty much um, it helped it helped me um get through my day so like that's probably why i'm such a big fan of what they do yeah i like i i can't always always play play mob d but i love I, I get into my moments when the only thing I can play is grimy shit and Mob Deep and Wu Tang yeah. is what I'm going for pretty yeah. much like right. the most. I'm yeah. in that same boat. I'm in that same boat. Like I'm not a huge Mob Deep fan, but I love Mob Deep. Me too. I love what they've done. I love their catalog. Their catalog. Like I listen to their music every now and then. I'm yeah. not as big a fan as Aaron is though. Like Aaron, me and Aaron. Yep. I got this. that. I bought, I bought all that shit. I got the um the Albert Einstein joint that he did with Alchemist. That Albert was Einstein was genius, yo. That shit is magnificent. I'm probably yeah. a bigger Wu Tang fan than I am. Um, I might be I'm a much bigger Wu Tang fan than I am a Mob Deep. But Mob Deep would probably be right after. Like yeah. I'm, you know, I always tell them to. I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be Outkast fan. I love Outkast too, but like, so like if I'm like just talking about like. You know the freeway underpass rapers. Rappers, I'm <laughs> really I'm, I, like they make me uncomfortable for the most part. But like Wu Tang and Mob Deep never did. Like I would, yeah. I would not cross the street if I saw members of Wu Tang or Mob Deep. I did. Yeah, I like, I like, I like I, I, would, yeah. I agree. I agree. I would pick Wu Tang over Mob Deep, but that's overwhelming situation right there yeah it's just a, it, i think it just depends on the listener like i said i listen to them for a different reason than other people probably do yeah you know because mm-hmm. other people probably just they just want that you know that uh that aggressive energy you know what i'm saying and sometimes yeah that's what you yeah. looking for but you know i don't know i just listen to it a little bit in a different perspective sometimes you get more from them. I'm going to definitely listen to this book again, though. Like, it's refreshing to hear Prodigy always tell his own story. Yeah. In between shooting. Yeah, that's it. I won't listen to it while I'm in the bed anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's no. It's <laughs> a really that's, bad idea. I'm, I'm scarred for life. <laughs> I played it while I, was, like, while I was cooking yesterday and today, and I was, like, attacking my food. <laughs> no, like <laughs> I was like, you will submit to me, chicken. Uh huh. Shake it. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So that's that okay. second period, and I think we got prodigy for for recess, it's right? right? It's only right. Let's talk about those Prodigy verses. It's only right. H&IC is one of my favorite albums of all time. Okay. And what's your favorite verses from it? My favorite verse, like, I love Feel My Pain. I love Trials of of Love. Like, tracks like that are what stand out to me. I love the drum with Twin. The Twin, when he was like, uh, he found cracks on me, he looked at him and gave them back to me. What track was that? Which which one is that? Uh, uh just another day. Yo, the, yo, I love that fucking song. Yeah. Yo, that John, shit. just another day. <laughs> that shit is magnificent, yo. Like he's like he found crack holy. Looked at him, gave back to it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Cool. I was like, yo, like <laughs> that's 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 I probably put that at the top of the list too. That's a, um, that's a, that's never, a never, never feel, never feel my pain is definitely one of the, the uh, deeper um, tracks. Yeah, 
But like that right. that that speaks to exactly what I was talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, like when you hear somebody talking about their you know like physical pain and dealing with that type of shit every day, yeah. it makes yeah. it make you look at it make you look at your situation. Like if you having a bad day and be like, you know what? Like it's other people going through you know worse situations and you know. And I push the, through the, when I think about prodigy, the first thing that comes to mind is stop bitching. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What did he say on there? He said, uh, "He said you crying because you broke the project. Right. That's not right. Pain. That's emotions. You a bitch. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, so, album, oh, wow. that, that album is very influential on as to who I am as a person. Yeah. Well, you know that what? He talks about that a lot. Like about that. Like telling people to shut the fuck up and stop bitching. Like stop like, bitching. When I when I start because I read the book a while back before we yeah. did it you know today for the show and I like I didn't get through the whole thing and I, and I, re- and I remember connecting to what Aaron's talking about because the pain that severe pain that he felt because of the sickle cell he's like in his mind you don't got shit to fucking bitch and whine about right like, it could always be worse. that's my motto that's my motto that's the one thing I live by and like like it could always be worse Appreciate well, I mean, like you're talking bad. about, um, like you're talking about, and like you were talking about earlier, like the, today's grimy is like, oh my god, I don't have my all oh, my all my friends are dead. I don't have, yeah, <laughs> I don't have, I don't have the, I don't have the new, um, the new fucking iPhone, John. Like, right. like right. you, heard, like, did y'all y'all heard the um <laughs> interview, the interview with Lil Yachty, how he was complaining about nobody liked me when I was in college, like what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like the 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 weirdo niggas is what's popping right now. Yeah, look, like, I, I was a weirdo and fuck that. I just did my own thing and found some other weirdos that were cool I, with me. I, I but, don't give one entire single fuck what anybody thinks about me. I but don't this, care at all. But this, I'm a yep. whole weirdo. Like, and this is my thing. Why is it? Why are, why are we at this point where like people like him? are on this platform to speak and like you know people identify with that like you know oh it was um, the time yeah it's like it's like oh well you know i was the outsider at college and that's why i couldn't do it and almost the, to the, the point where, almost to the point where he was crying and it's like there is like <laughs> the the outcast the popping like look at our future Mm. I mean, I don't. I never hated our future. I thought they were cool. They just they like, but, but, but then the, what you become? But they are. But then what happens is there's a way to be a weirdo. As far as I'm concerned, there's rules to all this shit. Like being, they, being a weirdo is I cool think now. they fucking created that whole fucking like they created that fucking whole trolling culture. They, that shit to be cool started to with troll. them. They made it cool to be a troll. They being did. a troll is an art form. Like I, <laughs> I hate that. The way, you, the way you hate future, the way I hate trolling, I fucking hate trolling. Get a real goddamn hobby. Troll is an art. I get to on Twitter and read. I can Don't read Talib Kweli's page all day, yo. Twitter finger. I love that shit. I love that shit. Like he be on it. And uh, he we love it. your and Twitter fingers. I love it. Oh my god. Talib Kweli, top five girl alive. Top five girl alive. He don't miss a beat though. <laughs> he, he be on it. Like, I can read that shit all day. Talib Kweli is my man. I fuck with him. Yeah, sometimes you know, I don't even. I wanna... I... Go ahead. Nah, sometimes I don't even be sure if that's him, like, doing that shit all day. I'm like, is it really what you do all day? That's him. That is him. That be him. So, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you saying that you think it's, like, somebody, like, 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 a, like an assistant? Like he's, like, sitting around. Like an admin or some really shit. No, that's him. He's, like, an admin that's and he's really Twitter him. finger. That's really him. Yeah. That's really him. He got him. some. I can see that shit all day. He be going in. He, he handed that shit to his wife, and she's Twitter fingers. That's what's really. Like I love, I love it. I love it. I love it. Like, you want to act like racism don't exist? Like he's in his. In, you talking about how annoying it is that he does it every day, but the fact that people send him this racist shit every day is even more annoying. And crazy. <laughs> but, but, but they're fucking trolling him because they know he's gonna react. I, I salute. I salute. Like. Fucking props to Talib Kweli, one of my top five favorite rappers of all time. Fucking Talib Kweli. Battle that shit every fucking day because it needs to be battled. You know what I like about Prodigy too that people don't always know about him? It's his production skills. I didn't know he made beats. Yeah, he, yeah, he, did, he, he was. Did, he, 
Yeah. He did some of this stuff on uh, HNRC. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Remember what he was talking wow. about in the book that him that it's when him. they first started out, he, he was making a beat primarily, which he learned how to do in his granddaddy's basement. Um, his, he got he got all his granddaddy's jazz records. He inherited them, and he was yeah. you know he was like into the music and. He said Havoc at first was doing like more writing and he was doing more producing I, and they I can't, both kind of... I can't get over that. I can't get over that. I can't get over yeah. the fact that Havoc used to write for Prodigy. Like, I, that, that shit caught me off guard. But that reminds me of EPMD like that. Like, like they were producing their own shit and but they were like, both producing it. Havoc is low on the ladder for me as a rapper. Yeah. Like I don't think I I have it is not. Yeah, though. I wouldn't. I'm not. I'm not too into his solo projects either. But Prodigy is very high on that ladder for me. Yeah. Well, yeah, I like. But I'm just saying, I like his production too. I like the that he did that as well. Yeah, I, um, I think he has I was a good air. I was yeah, yeah. I think I think um I think he played a part in a lot of the uh, samples they used. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, they was real heavy. Dope. They was they was heavy into the Scarface thing. Like, um, it's a couple of Scarface yeah. uh, samples. Like, I was listening to I some Mobb Deep shit the other day, and I uh, and I realized that um, they use quite a few of them. You know, they use uh Scarface sample on It's Mine. They use Scarface on uh, uh, uh got God Part Three, mm-hmm. and it's another track I was listening to that um they use. I, I I hate the fact that Scarface is hell on the pedestal that it is in our culture. Cause well, they don't do it anymore, but but they but they. Scarface they was a to. fucking idiot, yo. He was a fucking yeah, he idiot. was, but but that's I who they looked the up fact. to. I hate the fact that that's like a role model. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, let me tell you something. When you see a man bringing in mad duffel bags in a in a montage. And you hear push it to the limit over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> That's some shit to emulate as far as he But, but I'm saying, I'm saying, I <laughs> always hated the fact that Scarface was like held up to this standard. Like, that's what we should be. It's not even just uh, Scarface, though. It's the mob, it's that mob culture mentality. No, if anything, if anything, I think we should put the movie Mobsters on that pedestal. How about we put nobody? Yeah. That, put, uh, no, yeah. like, if, if you gonna emulate somebody, emulate Lucky Luciano. I don't think it. I don't think it's about well, emulation. No. I think you it's more so have, just. No, not lucky. I think lucky. it's more so about. I think it's lucky, more so lucky. Lucky had it going on. Yeah, it's more no, so just idolizing. A, lucky the used to try to pimp the black community, though. He used to try to um to, to hone but in I'm on our shit. Terms, I'm saying in terms of how he treated his fellow, his his people. Um, yeah, but what about our people? I'm going with Bumpy Johnson on this one. I'm sorry. Well, Bumpy Johnson, too. <laughs> I love the Bumpy Johnson. <laughs> Prodigy put out, too. Nice segue. Yeah. All that Prodigy. Yeah, those, yeah, 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 yeah. Those, yeah, those, yeah, those are good. I, I, I like the first one better. Yeah. I love them young, yo. Like, them young are amazing. <laughs> yeah, did he put them, did he put them? I can't remember if he put them out before or after, Joe. I think before. Yeah. I love them joints. Did anybody? How y'all feel about the blood? Cause I'm not a big fan of it. But how y'all feel about the blood money? Uh, my deep album. The I joint they did. I, honestly, I never listened to it. it I, I mean, never, I never listened to it. I never listened to it. I, yeah, I've actually heard it. By that I'm time, curious. like you guys remember, I was teaching you guys at that time. I was never really a big fan of that whole G unit. Like I didn't get it. Yeah, I, I almost, I almost didn't, I didn't even, understand I almost that. Didn't even, I almost didn't even listen to that one because they were signed with G Unit. I was like, "What the hell is this?" But, <laughs> but like, like I said, I wasn't a big Mighty fan like you was. Yeah, I didn't follow them like that. I, I had definitely felt like it lost. It had lost that that. By that time, it, it, there was something that was missing from it. It wasn't. You know yeah. that that mob beat that I love from right. the it beginning. Right. It was. It was. Yeah. It was something. It was something completely different. Even America's Nightmare, that album before that was better. They, in my they, opinion. They, it was they, wait a minute. Stigma, I think. I think we just solved the riddle, Aaron. I think we just solved the riddle of what would have happened. That boy and Puffy. 
Oh, uh, it would have sounded like a G Unit album. <laughs> it would have sounded like a. <laughs> That was the problem right there. That's what was that? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I don't I know. Mean, I'm, you gotta I'm remember curious. though. That was. Go ahead. I'm curious. I'm curious as how other fans like you know y'all know where the Twitter is. Just hit us on Twitter, Facebook, whatever. What y'all think? I'm saying though, like from the outside looking in, because I wasn't a big Moppy fan. From the uh-huh. outside looking in, they had they had this stigma about them. That was like, oh, they 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 low key whack. They whack. Who, who said that? That's, that's, that's from the outside looking in. That's the general understanding. I never heard that. Like, they all right. They are all right. They just all right. They never, they never reach greatness. You talking that, about that might be, you talking about, That might be, general. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was going to say, that, that's definitely Ozzie. generational. Because that ain't no bullshit I ever heard from my generation. Yeah, anybody, it's anybody, true, anybody. Yeah. True. <laughs> Yeah, anybody that's older than us, like they, they, yeah, Mm-mm. it's a different perspective. It's, nah. it's true, though. It's true. People, but look I'm at saying, like, like nobody in our age group would no, would come out their face with no dumb shit like that. You wouldn't right. say it. No, you wouldn't say it. But that's the general perception. Nah, but he's saying nah, in say. your <laughs> in your generation, that's the general perception. Yeah, yeah, in our generation. Yeah, yeah. Not, that, but not yeah. mine. Like, ain't nobody gonna be like, "What, well, Mob Deep is low key whack." Nobody in my age would say Mob Deep and Loki Wet. Right. Like, I would like people, like, people that I know that, like, really grew up listening to that shit. Like, they'd tell you nah. stories about how Fight started you listening. Me. Fight started listening to the infamous. <laughs> like, you, you, you they had that right? much energy. You gotta be a certain age like Mob Deep. You do really think so? I think so. You gotta be a certain age. If you ain't a certain age, then you don't appreciate what they talking about. Or you gotta be like a '90s music head, like you really do. Yeah, yeah. Like they they don't they don't translate well to the new generation. Yeah, I was I would definitely agree with that. Like they're th- like they can't transcend like necessarily like a Nas or like a Tupac. Right, yeah, their music definitely does speak more to um that particular era. Yeah. And I, I grew up in that era, but I didn't connect to their music like the, like you did. Yeah, that's but, because okay, like well, question. it depends. It it depends on what you was listening to. Like um, my brother listened to a lot of Wu Tang, a lot of uh Black Moon Boot but Camp. See, like I, question. I, Why I remember. Why translate? Right. I, I, that's I don't I don't know. Like I have no gripes against my beat. I love my beat, but I I'm not checking for my beat. I never checked for my. But why would okay so okay but you love Wu Tang though why would Wu Tang translate but not I I don't know <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I, I I don't know I don't see I see uh, like okay I get it the big differences to me between Wu Tang and Mob Deep are obviously you know the production styles are very different I mean where's the production makes everything sharp period yeah. yeah. And they were largely conceptual. You know, they had their own shit happening with the, you know, the whole Wu Tang Shaolin. Yeah. Um, cultural, cultural appropriation. Shit. <laughs> well, you know, but but done correctly, as we said on oh, last week's show. <laughs> I think that the, I think the whole folklore with Wu Tang is what kind of pushed it over to people. Like really yeah. buy into that kind of shit. They love it. Well, you, with, with Wu Tang, it's a little bit different. Like you know, a lot of times, like like we said, like with Wu Tang, they take you to another world with it. Like it's not, they not yeah. straight up and down, just giving yeah. you like street street Grimy. stories and and, oh, yeah. and straight up and, and down, straight up and down. We bring it back catchphrases. Yeah, they not they not just giving you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not just giving you uh, uh, street stories and um, reminiscing on old friends dying and all True. that type of shit. You know True. what I'm saying? Well, they're they not just do, you know, after the laughter, you know, comes tears. Right, yeah. And but, like, it's not even, <laughs> even, even 36 Chambers is a lot different than everything that came after that, though. 36 Chambers True. is a fucking masterpiece. Pretty much, yes. Yeah. 36 Chambers, I, I think, is, is less is less complex than um than any Wu Tang project that came out. I fucking so. love that album. 36 Chambers is a fucking masterpiece. Yeah, it's Absolutely. It absolutely is. I would like to point to a song that I used to hate at first Mr. Chess Boxing. 
<laughs> oh my fucking god. I love that. Wait, I love that. 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 I love Ever. I love fucking y'all. ever. Shout out, like, shout out to the Wu Tang clan. I feel can like do skit, everybody do skit, knows. Do everybody knows. Right no, please don't. Please don't. No. I fucking. I fucking. I fucking. No. That shit was gay as hell, by the way. Like that. Like now, by by today's standards, Pause. nobody would call that. It'd be like eight. Million pauses in it. Pause, pause, pause the whole conversation. <laughs> the whole conversation was <laughs> a one big ass pause. That shit was but so it, you know, fucking dope, though. It's so different cool. times, different, you know, different way, way, I need way that different times. Where they got the Wu <laughs> lined up, lined up according to that skit, where they name everybody. I oh, I that. saw that. I that need was, that, that shirt. That, I that, that shit that. is dope. That's I feel cool. like I feel like I need some. Some prodigy and my deep um clothing lines or some, some posters. I need I need some memorabilia to start surfacing. I need somebody to start doing some dope like airbrushed. Let's do let's do an H N I C ball cap. Shit. Do the no, album I need some. On the baseball cap. Let's do the album cover on the baseball cap. How many kids does um the um prodigy have? Does he have? I forgot. I think he, I think he had like two. Yeah, Cause he had the one son he talked about um, being born, and then um, he has a daughter, right? Does a he have a daughter? Yeah, having, yeah, a daughter. Yeah. having a daughter changes every man. That's what's up. I'm, you know what? I'm really glad that he was able to grow, change, and yeah, and and get gray facial hair and and just be a grown ass man. <laughs> Before he passed away, and I, I was telling you all earlier, the um your your life expectancy with sickle cell is between the ages of like forty and sixty. So that's bad. That's bad. He 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 kind of hit it right where it where it lives with that disease. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much what happened. Yeah. Can I say Albert Einstein? I, I'm I'm just I'm just um. I'm glad that people can get something from um, his whole situation, though. Like, you know, even though it took for him to die, like, I'm glad that people can, you know, understand that, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, what comes with having that disease and understanding it better. On top of the fact yeah. that, in in general, like he was saying, um, I think it was a, inter- a recent interview he was doing, he was talking about, like, just how having a disease taught him to live better eat better and all that type of stuff like you know we need to do that in general we need to do that in general so yeah yeah very true very true and i mean i'm glad because that he was able to do that but i I do feel like early on he was self-medicating because there's not a lot of things you can do for sickle cell i remember he was talking about in the book i think when you're young they give you like certain kind of pain meds and then when you get older they give you like morphine and like strong ass mm-hmm. pain meds and that's about it and you, you put up a tolerance to that and you and, and he had because remember he was saying he would he would take it in an hour and he would be in pain again he would be screaming yeah, yeah. Sad. I can't you know, I just I can't imagine that shit I can't imagine he was that's strong right. but that's why I think You Can Never Feel My Pain is one of my favorite Prodigy tracks. Like, I love that fucking song on H and I C You Can Never Feel My Pain. Yeah. yeah. Love that fucking song. Yeah, what's crazy, what's crazy about that is that, like, um, when you listen to it, sometimes you just, like, you know, you're thinking about the other people that do that do deal with that situation, and you're like, well, damn, who can feel your pain? Like, you know, like, how many other people are here dealing with it, you know? Other so, folks that got sickle cell. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, but it make you think how many other people out here that's really dealing with it that don't talk about it like he do. Oh yeah, like, I, never knew, I never knew Chris Lighty had to right. Me either, but but see, but there's different types of um, levels to it, and he had the like the worst case. Everybody doesn't have the worst case. 
Yeah. So it it depends on what, yeah. What, like, or what level it is that you have of sickle cell anemia. It could be a little bit not as bad as Prodigy had. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely rest in peace. Albert Prodigy Johnson. We love you. We love your contribution to hip hop. It's it's hard. Rest in peace and rest in power. My beat forever. It's hard listening to that book, yo. It is. With him narrating, it's hard. So, for homework next week, um, we're going to talk about. <laughs> Hit the wrong button. Um, that was funny. We're <laughs> uh, talking about. We're gonna be talking about prison, <laughs> prison, um, and um, prison culture in the black community. Oh, oh, man. Man. Uh, and you don't necessarily. Uh, well, first let me get your homework, it. and then we can talk about it. I got a you problem. Can, Y'all niggas, well, y'all niggas promoting jail culture. Y'all niggas promote jail culture are gay, you know, gay. Like, fuck y'all. Stop talking. Stop promoting that shit. That shit ain't cool. Well, you can... And and, and we'll talk about that next week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that next week. But if you fuck want gay, to, to, to know what we're going to be referencing, um, we're going to be talking about Ava DuVernay's Human 3, 13 which can be found on Netflix. If you know, don't have it in your collection or whatever. It's, it's dope, though. You should watch. It makes you angry. Really angry. That movie is very inflammatory. But you know, it's, it's, it's very inflammatory. You definitely need to know about that. But you know, if, you, if you haven't yet, you should you should watch um, 13th by Ava DuVernay and the new Jim Crow will be another book that we um, discuss. You don't have to read it, all of it, but we're going to be talking about for those things in conjunction with the community and mm-hmm. the prison culture because that that's basically what those both those are talking about. It's about you know the mass incarceration of African American males and Black people period as a new way of extending slavery just like everything you know else what? in this country has been you know what i'm holding my people to a higher standard yes you do have to read these books read the book in its entirety okay go read something okay. stop being lazy go read something and say stop being lazy you big Go read Please. a book, you illiterate son of a bitch. <laughs> that, yeah, someone has said that. Read, read a fucking the, book. <laughs> the new Jim Crow is Michelle and um, Alexander. So both of those are, I say they are, they are must um, read and they are um, must see. Like you really need to see 13 and you really need to, to read the new Jim Crow. Even if you don't finish it all, like before next week, homework. Those are things you need to know about because you need to understand what the fuck is happening and what has happened and why, and what that means for you. How you can help prevent that shit? We need to be. Only you can prevent prison culture. Yo, bro, bro, do you know what's that? (laughs) Kids these days have no idea who smoking the bear is. I mean, you know, what you expect? Are you expect? serious? Like, are we going back to not preventing forest fires? <laughs> I think we're going back to not being in the forest. I think that's Cali- what we're California, California happening. California fire every year. But it's not a forest, know. though. People just, it's just brush fire. <laughs> these motherfuckers don't know who smoking the bear is. Like, it's a that's brush what fire. <laughs> this is why California catch on fire every year. Every year is something. No, it like catches on fire because it's it's dry <laughs> and dusty, <laughs> and it's just spontaneously it catches fire. You that's don't even it. gotta be even doing yeah. shit. You can just don't not even be. Do like, do not put 
no mess around no mat in no, no dry ass no, area no, like that. Put your out. Don't flick no cigarettes. Like stop Everything just fucking fire. catch fire. <laughs> stop letting California on fire. Y'all, 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 the way they used to when smoke was was popping. The smoky is very necessary to the culture. Smoky is hip hop. And, and, and only on this show can we go from prison culture <laughs> to smoky. <today. laughs> <laughs> I need to smoke the bear sample. Let me get a track. Only you can do the forest fires and burn some shit down. Yeah, that should be hot. Oh no, that was a bad. <laughs> you said that should be hot. That's horrible. <laughs> that's <a> song, <laughs> you know what though? That's that shit is hip hop because Busta Rhymes made that song, um, um, dangerous, and he mm. got that shit from a PSA, like a pill PSA. Oh my back goodness. in the day when we were kids, like go back and look that shit up. He got that shit from. Um, um, some pills, some some little puppet pills. Thinking, um, so we are serious. We could make you delirious. <laughs> like seriously, oh don't look goodness. it up. <laughs> <laughs> he, he That's made funny. That shit a, <laughs> he made that shit into a run. Yeah, that shit became a song because he made That's a fucking genius, song out of a PSA. Genius of hip hop yeah. culture. So go ahead and sample that Smokey the Bear. <laughs> That's what oh, we do man. in hip hop. That's we what need, we do. We need a Smokey sample. We need a Smokey sample. Kids like, don't know it's Smokey the Bear. I'm taking it back. Like, I'm taking it back. On the East Coast Studio Fire. Yup. We make songs about brush fires with Smokey the Bear samples. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all feel me. <laughs> that should be hot. <laughs> Sam, Sam, that should be hot. Thank you. <laughs> and this, that, that's our show. That's our show. That's the birthday show. Yay! Happy birthday. And we talk about we talk about research. Yo, you gotta sing the real birthday song. The Stevie Wonder version. Go, Shorty. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> we gonna party like, like, like it's your birthday. <laughs> because it's your birthday. You like it's your birthday. And you hey, know we uh, don't give a fuck. It's not your birthday. But it is song, my birthday though. It is. That song, that song was about fucking your cousin. I can't support that. What? <laughs> what? That song was about fucking your cousin. How did you get there? Yeah, where did you get there? Like, <laughs> I'll bring it I don't later. understand. I'll... I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I don't you understand. Can't, you can't drop the mic after you say some shit like that. That song is about fucking your cousin. I, I can't what? report that. That song is about fucking on E. It's really about fucking on X and that kind of shit, but. He said, I got what you need. You can be taking drugs. Yeah, I'll give him that. That's all yeah. about fucking your cousin. Where in that song does he talk about fucking his cousin? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that either. Oh my god! I ain't, I ain't the biggest Fifty Cent fan, but damn, I ain't. Me either. This is crazy. But I definitely know this song, and I do not remember anything about fucking yeah. your cousin in this song. Maybe that, I should have said birthday song by the Beatles and said maybe that would have went a different way. That's, that's yeah, right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I can't stand you. <laughs> you know, I have to break that fucking your cousin thing down at a later Let date. Let me listen to it and I'll get back to y'all. I'll just get back to y'all. That's gonna be like, post that joint up on Facebook. We need to put that on Facebook that's so everybody can interact with that crazy that's, shit. That's <laughs> that kid. When I hear that song, that's what I remember. I, I took from oh, it. No. That's what I remember. I took from it. That song was about fucking your cousin. I don't want no part. Um, well, Prodigy <laughs> talked about having a crush on his cousin. Apparently, they were kissing cousins, bringing that it back to Prodigy. Thing. That was a thing. Ooh. Yeah, it was. Kind of, sort of. Black people, yeah. black people were fucked up. Well, his dad was probably fucking the mom, and that was his cousin. That was fucked up. <laughs> black people. Because he did kind of say that, too. But, alrighty, that's the show. It's been a wonderful week. 
hopefully you will join us again next week and school is officially out 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 if you have it don't fucking cuz it don't fucking cuz it if you have it don't fucking cuz it